All right, everybody, welcome back to another episode of Seven Guests. Today, I'm being joined with a new friend who we have not done this before with. Uh, would you like to introduce yourself? Uh, hi, my name is uh, Rain. All right, so as usual, uh, we're going to have uh, 25 servants, five of which, and a list of 30, uh, five of which are false for a total of 25 characters. Um, are there any here that you're- I know I gave you the list ahead of time so that you could brush up on it and have a fair shot, but are there any here that you're not 100% certain about knowing who they are? Uh, I just went through and looked everyone up again, uh, shortly before recording, so I think I have at least a vague idea for all of them. Alright, in that case we're going to move on to our first one. So feel free to share share any thoughts you have or any other ideas about who this might be. All right. Um, well, they appear to be dressed in, uh, I guess, sort of a formal robe is what I'd call it. I don't know. Um, makes me think of possible some kind of a religious figure, more than military or anything like that, at least. Uh, looking down the list, a couple people do stand out. Um, the first is Ankadu, but I think that might just be because I associate the character with the color green. Okay. Um, other than that, Oh, I had another idea. Maybe Orion, since he has a very, like, sort of natural vibe. All right. Would you like to place a specific guess, or would you like to ruminate a little bit more? I could do, I guess. All right, you are correct. And all now right. we're going to just show off all four of the characters like art for art that they have in the mobile game. Nice. So, mm -hmm. A lot of those are very similar. Yeah, they are. Some of them are more drastic than others. That's true. Some characters have a lot more drastic changes than others. But moving on. Oh dear. Interesting. Well, uh, this guy gives off very obvious, um, I guess, warfare vibes is what I'd say. Mm -hmm. uh, the sharp edges and somewhat deranged expression make me think that this is someone who would be portrayed as a villain more. Uh, <sighs> Then again, I don't really know what characters would be portrayed as a villain in Fate, so... Mm -hmm. hmm. I could see this being... Uh, probably a Western character, given the... Well, I don't know, actually. I don't know that much about Eastern-styled armor. Um... Well, I'll give you a hint with some of these characters. It's also useful to look at the background and not just the character themselves. That's true, but I don't know what I gained from it in this instance. Uh... Oh, this is Vlad the Impaler, then. Yeah, yeah. I know I kind of gave it away with pointing out to look at the background, but I mean, there's literal people on impaled on pikes. Yeah, I didn't notice that at first. I thought it was uh, mm -hmm. stuff falling from the sky or something. So you've got you got the, his full set here. All right, that third one is a or fourth one is a total tone shift. The fourth ones are generally a lot more different than the first three. They're yeah, usually like a picture of a character doing something. Even then, going from like <laughs> having recently impaled people to enjoying a glass in the moonlight is a big shift. Yeah, th this sort of portrayal. Uh, Fate has two different portrayals of Vlad. Uh, this one is supposed to be his, uh, 
very bloody sort of reign as a crusader. Okay. Uh, not 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 a crusader because he wasn't a crusader, but like a defender of Christendom, sort of yeah. in a very bloody sense. And so they try to convey that a little bit with the whole maniacal thing, but also the sort of just more peaceful moment with the last one, I believe. Interesting. All right. Uh, okay, my first thought on this one is that it's Francis Drake, because that's a naval pilot, or captain, with a prominent um, cross. Is that a cross, or is it a related symbol? <laughs> It is a cross of some sort. Fair enough. Yeah, I think Francis Drake would be my guess for this one. It is Christopher Columbus. Ah, I forgot he was on the list. Gosh dang it. I've got it in front of me and everything. Mm -hmm. And then you have his four ascensions, which, um... Yeah. <laughs> that last one is... Interesting. Uh, fate tends... He's portrayed very much as a villain yeah yeah that doesn't surprise me but still just being surrounded by bunny girls is not the direction i would have thought they'd take it yeah so interesting i honestly forgot that's what it was until i pulled this up because i never actually got him in the game and so you know Fair when you don't get them and stuff you kind of just the last dissensions can come out of nowhere because you forget because you never see them yeah Okay. Uh, this guy appears to have an Egyptian or possibly Middle Eastern theme. Mm -hmm. I'm trying to figure out which characters match that. Not a whole lot. Um, I could see it being Grecian, actually, so... Hmm. Out of characters with a Grecian theme, I don't know why, but I'd say he's giving me more Romulus or Odysseus vibes. And yes, I know that Romulus is Roman. Um. So, is that your final answer? Odysseus, I think. Yeah. Eh, maybe Jason, actually. Oh, really? Interesting. Yep. Ramses. If you look in the background, you can see a pyramid. That's true. Um. When I looked up Ozymandias, it only came up with a poem. <laughs> uh, well, that's why I tried to put the Ramses bit in there as well. Yeah, I get you now. I get you. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, so you, you've sense. got his four little things. I like the pattern on his... Um, I don't know what the technical term for that is. The front of his skirt. Yeah, the, the front piece thing. Yeah. I don't know what that's called either, off the top of my head. I think I know what it's called, but I don't remember it off the top of my head. Yeah. Anyways. Oh, dear. <laughs> there are some design choices going on here, and I don't know if I like them. I think this might be Frankenstein's monster. It is Frankenstein's monster. Okay. Yeah. Because she looks very, uh, the headpiece... And the lightning in the background in particular. Yeah. Uh, so do you have anything? You said you had some thoughts about the design. Uh, I'm not fond of it. Hmm. I don't know. She looks pretty young, and I don't really like her outfit. Fair enough. Uh, most You would be probably happy to know that most of the fan base considers her a, da a, da a daughter rather than a waifu. I mean, yeah, that's fair. That's hmm. good. Still, though. Yeah. And we have this guy. Uh, I think that this is going to be uh, Ivan the Terrible. Oh. Very cold weather. Um, very monstrous implies a character that might be portrayed as a villain. You know. Mm-hmm. Those are the two big things, I guess. All right, you are correct in that. Cool. Get 
same as Ivan it, in all of his four forms. It's interesting to me that they chose to make his blue outfit come after the red, because I feel like the red stands out more and makes him look more regal. Mm -hmm. So far as he looks regal. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Ivan the Terrible has some interesting design choices going on with him. I'm not yeah. gonna lie. Although he I... does provide one of the greatest scenes in the game, where you, uh, in the mobile game, where it's in an alternate timeline sort of thing. Mm -hmm. But you're riding on a giant woolly mammoth. But no, he's riding on, like, this giant woolly mammoth monster. And, uh, like, because this guy's, like, massive. Like, that's not human scale. Yeah. And then you're and then you're riding on top of like this giant golem that's throwing down with him, constructed of the Minotaur's labyrinth, all while DSRA is playing in the background. Interesting. <laughs> it's a very epic scene that they build up to, but yeah, out of context, it sounds definitely. Yeah, it does sound like it'd be cool. I just it it really is hard to imagine how they got there. Yeah, it, it was a climactic battle of the whole bit story yeah. arc. But moving on. Uh, okay. This is gonna be... Hmm. This is either gonna be one of the Knights of the Round Table or Joan of Arc. Mm -hmm. And I think... I think that it might be uh, Joan of Arc. It is Bedivere. Oh, it is? Yes. Wild. And fun fact, he is in fact male. Interesting. Just a very pretty boy. Well, that's all right. Some people joke uh, and call him uh, Princess Bedivere for somewhat obvious reasons. Yeah, I could see that. But Bedivere is one of the bestest boys. And he, he deserves nothing but happiness for all the stuff that he went through. Oh. Alright, well, this person looks like another character that is being portrayed as a villain. Um... Hmm. Let me take a look at the background. Okay, yeah, it's hard to see anything there. Is this one Francis Drake? This is not Francis Drake. Okay. Uh, the background does seem to be slightly nautical is the only reason I said, but it could just be like the color scheme. I'm honestly not sure what the background is supposed to be. Yeah, I could see the um, kind of ruffles by his legs being waves, and then mm -hmm. ship, you know, masts in the far back. But I, yeah, I kind of don't think that's what it is. Uh, all right. If it's not Francis Drake, then I could see it being either Miyamoto Musashi, because I just don't know much about him in general he was definitely one of the ones i had to look up or maybe orion if you took orion more generally as you know a constellation of the hunter there allow it allows for more flexibility in what the character would be like final guess mm, uh what was the other one i said uh musashi i guess it is Lancelot. Really? Okay, yeah, I wouldn't have picked up on that one. Yeah, this is, uh, Lancelot has two forms. One is his more shining heroic knight form, and this would be, like, post, uh, him, him, uh, uh his, uh, adultery with, uh, Guinevere, and then killing a bunch of knights at the round table and fleeing the country. Yeah, okay, yeah, that makes sense. All so right. This is his more Black Knight form, which actually is the one that came first in hmm. terms of fate designs. Interesting. 
Alright, okay, this guy... Sort of primal and bestial, I guess. Like an orc. Uh, this... Mr. Hyde out of Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde, maybe? Nah, probably not. Is it is it Heracles? It is Hercules. Heracles, yes. Interesting. He was actually one of the original eight servants that they made for the Fate franchise. Really? Yes. Yeah. And is to this day one of the and proved to be he was like the major person to kill in like each route of the game. Huh. Or well, not technically, but he had awesome moments and he was the major uh obstacle in the first route and then in the second and third routes while he got ganked by other stuff. He was still has awesome moments in all of them. Interesting. Mm -hmm. That's pretty cool actually. But yeah, Berserk Berserker or Heracles is the best. And I love him. And he's amazing. <laughs> and then we have this guy. Alright, take a closer look. Uh... Interesting. I don't know if I like what they did with like the bottom half of his coat there, where it's like strung up like a shoelace. Hmm. I have a feeling this is Leonardo da Vinci, though. Final answer? Yes. Sherlock Holmes. Really? Okay, yeah, I guess that makes sense, too. And if you look in the background, this is something that tripped a rule up <laughs> as well. If you look in the background, you'll see 221B. Okay, yeah, I definitely should have picked up on that. <laughs> Most people don't notice it until I point it out. Gosh, it's uh, the gadgets around him made me think of an inventor. Fair enough. But they're all like micros. All the gadgets around him are microscopes, so at the same time. And he's holding You're his traditional pipe. Oh, why did he undo his shoelaces for the second picture? Did his he? Laces. The uh, third picture, I guess, actually. Uh, I don't know. Maybe they thought it would make him look more cool or something. Who knows? It's just an interesting design choice. Sherlock Holmes is a weird character in Fate. Like, there's a lot of questions up in the air if this is actually Sherlock Holmes or somebody pretending to be him and all this other stuff. You know, that's appropriate to the character. Like, like they've left a lot of stuff up in the air, and the only other character who can confirm or deny information on him is Moriarty, and Moriarty as automatically... Very much not someone who's inclined to give us straight answers about this sort of thing. Yeah. Because Holmes is, like, one of the major, like, side characters that helps us out in a lot of situations. But it's also been hinted that he can't be trusted and all this other stuff and that he might not be. And so we're just like, I don't know. <laughs> Who knows what his deal is? Interesting. Mm -hmm. And ironically enough, we can trust Moriarty more than him, I feel like. But, yeah. That's a little horrifying. Oh no. Bates Moriarty's interesting, actually. We can talk about him later. Okay. Let's see. Hmm. Okay, well, she's got, uh, well, obviously the demon or dragon tail. And a lot of gothic imagery around and behind her. Oh, wait, that's a pool of blood. That means she's Elizabeth Bathory. You are correct. Yeah, okay, yeah. yeah uh, they, they, they took Elizabeth in an interesting direction. She oh, wants no. to be an idol. I don't know if I like that. I'm honestly I'm honestly a big fan of Elizabeth personally, but that's more because she pops up a lot and has a lot of uh character development stuff happen in a lot of her stuff. I, I could see them taking the character in, in an interesting direction, but at the same time that's just you know, 
woman who bathes in human blood to maintain her youth becoming an idol is... Uh, well, know. the other thing is they split Elizabeth up into two separate things. You have Elizabeth Bathory, and then you have, like, her grown-up self as Carmilla. Interesting. And so Elizabeth is supposed to be the less monstrous, more... Uh, she didn't know... She Nobody told her she was wrong, so she kept doing it sort of thing. And Carmilla is more, I don't really care if I'm if this is evil or not. I'm just going to do it anyways. And I'm also more vampiric. Huh. So, th yeah. Th there, There's a lot of stuff that we could get into with Elizabeth, but yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I still don't know if I care for her, but that is interesting. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, this man has a gauntlet and needles behind him. I'm going to say this is Nikola Tesla. This is Nikola Tesla, yes. He looks very uh, electric, to put it lightly. Mm -hmm. Yep, and then you've got his four designs. Interesting. So is there an implication here? Yeah, actually, I guess half of his body is robotic now. Uh, that's oh. actually supposed to be a power suit, not robot. Oh, all right. Still cool. I like her bird. <laughs> That's the first thing I'm going to say. Hmm. This is hard because I know that um, fate has a tendency to gender bend male characters. Or male historical figures and you know mythological figures. Yep. So even though there's like only two women left on the list, I don't know. Her colors are very French, but I think I've seen the design of Jean d'Arc floating around before, and I'm pretty sure this isn't it. All right. Uh. I feel like Florence Nightingale is going to be more of a nurse. Okay. Uh, oh, man. Which leaves the gender bent character, which leaves gender bending. Or Anastasia. But or Anastasia. It could be Anastasia. It could be, yeah. Hmm. Ugh, I need to take a closer look at her hand. What is going on with that? It is a gauntlet. I think it's just the position of the fingers on the staff is freaking me out a little bit. Mm -hmm. She's got like a heart. I'm not gonna lie. This is simultaneously one of the easiest and hardest, depending on if you if you know what to look for. Yeah, I. Oh man. I'm gonna say it is either Romulus or Anastasia. But it I is night. Sorry. Uh, I I think I'm leaning towards Anastasia of the two. It is neither. Yeah. It is Leonardo da Vinci. No. He turned him. To be fair, uh, he turned himself into the Mona Lisa. Funniest thing I've ever seen. <laughs> Did he really? That that is canonically what happened. He was summoned, and he's like, "I don't like looking ugly. I like looking. I have magic powers now. I am the most beautiful thing I know. The Mona Lisa. Bam." Okay, you know what? I guess as explanations go, I will accept that one. He turned himself into the Mon Mona Lisa. The, oh my gosh. The, okay. That that would have probably been my third guess, I want to say, just because of the gauntlet, but since it was hard to tell whether it was like a technological gauntlet or not, I don't know. But yeah, like when, once you look at the face and you really look at it, you it kind of stands out. Yeah. I feel, yeah, I I, I feel like. 
Yeah. Oh, man. Interesting choice. Mm-hmm. Oh, no. <laughs> this man is not wearing much. <laughs> uh, is this Paris? No, uh, this is not Paris. Okay. My second guess is Jason, then. It is Jason. Okay. <laughs> he seems... um. Ostentatious. The kind of guy who thinks that he's all that and repeatedly gets proven wrong but never accepts it. Uh, he's kind of that. Uh, he, he does have shade to that, but he also, like, comes in really handy and is actually all... He has, like, no actual powers for himself, really. But he is actually really good at leading others. Especially when yeah. his back is put into a corner, so... There's merit in that. Mm -hmm. That's fair. But the first time you see him, he's a very much an arrogant guy. The second time, he's on your side, and he's probably one of the most helpful people. Like, in the situation that you're in. Yeah. Gosh. Yeah. Oh, no. <laughs> so, oh, who this? No. This is someone who needs to put more clothes on. <laughs> uh, is this Jack the Ripper? This is Jack the Ripper. Oh, I had a feeling. Do, do you want the explanation for why they made Jack the Ripper the way they did? Or sure. the explanation? Okay, so... But sure. Jack the Ripper is a wraith formed from the uh, souls of all the abandoned and aborted children of lost of London prostitutes. Interesting. Lore wise, uh, still doesn't mean that they need to dress her up like that. Yeah, no. What the, the dress up is, yeah, no. Yeah. But that's that's the reasoning for why it's a small child. Yeah, I I, I can. Yeah, that's fair. Pretty much, I judge people on if they use the first form or not. <laughs> yeah. I think you could get away with the, I guess, the fourth. Mm -hmm. The fourth, fourth, yeah, you could get away with the fourth, but the yeah. middle two, if you're using the middle two, no. -uh. No. No. All right. Um... This guy looks like, hmm. well, for one, it looks like he's wearing an entire mech suit. Or maybe his legs have been replaced by a robot. Okay. Um, he looks very heroic, but in kind of a old mentor who dies halfway through the story kind of way. <laughs> Um, really holding anything. I will tell you, this is probably one of the hardest. That's fair. I'm going to guess Orion. It is not Orion, although you were close. It is a Greek hero. It is Odysseus. That's a weird... Okay, and, and, so, and so you're going to have to hear me out here about this one. Yes. This makes sense, but only once you take into the fact that this is something you would have no idea about, and why I said it was one of the hardest. In fate mythology, in the fate lore, the Greek gods were actually alien robots. <laughs> oh no, I hate that. Okay. So, so you're you're so uh, the Trojan horse was actually a mecha. So you you were not incorrect in that, and he is, in fact, wearing a mecha suit. <laughs> the Trojan horse was a mecha? Oh my <laughs> The Trojan horse was a mecha, yes. <laughs> oh, I both love and hate it when uh, stories do stuff like this. Oh, it's terrible. Yep, and so, like, you can see in his last ascension, he even has, like, his helmet. 
Oh man. He's heroically holding his helmet. <laughs> oh man. Uh, yep. I would not have guessed the Odysseus for that. Nano machines. That's how the Greek <laughs> heroes came about. <laughs> oh no. Okay. Um. This character appears to have a lot of Japanese symbolism, so I'm going to guess it's one of the two Japanese characters. Uh, she's got the sword, red. Um, her headdress appears to have been made to be reminiscent of the World War II flag that's so famous. But I don't know for sure if that's the case or not. I'm going to guess this is uh, the swordsman, or maybe the swordsman's younger sister, Musashi. It is not Musashi, it is Oda Nobunga. Really? Interesting. So Oda only has two forms in this one because she was a welfare servant, which means they give her away for free, but you get less artwork. Okay. And they also have, uh, they have, like, another version of Oda, which is, like, more fleshed out, but Oda's one of the more complicated characters of Fate, which is not helped by the fact that they initially used her as a gag character, so. Yeah. Gag character who then they later started playing seriously. Yeah. I would imagine that characters who have been alive recently enough, um... To have like a historical presence and legacy that's still felt in you know the nations that they were a part of are a little bit harder to execute well i mean it's not even that it's that they specifically took a couple of historical japanese characters and they had a long-running uh, comic gag thing about it and then they started taking them seriously but they still retain gag elements fair enough to some degree but yeah so that's oda nobunga interesting oh this anastasia her sh shirt seems very uh Russian. I don't know why. I'm gonna tell you right away. I I'm gonna make that your guess. This was not Anastasia. This was Florence Nightingale. No. I was expecting Florence Nightingale to have like a, you know, a massive syringe or something. <laughs> Interesting. Okay. I still think one of my favorite funniest moments of being in the Fate fandom was the time that one of Florence Nightingale's descendant, like direct descendants like accidentally actually stumbled across this and I'm like what the heck is this <laughs> oh that's the, the, the granddaughter subreddit had a field day and a half with that oh man she seems friendly i can say that at least uh she's actually a berserker servant which means that she is quite literally insane in a i'm going to treat you no matter what it, which uh automatically defaults to stuff like amputations and such. Oh, well, that's a little horrifying. I think I think one of my favorite moments is uh, in one of the singularities, in one of the story bits, uh, you're traveling with her, and she's, like, uh, one of the, uh, she's, like, on your side. And so when you're facing down the final villain of that area, uh, he, she's like, you're mentally ill. My recommended treatment is suicide. <laughs> <laughs> I hate that. Oh, yeah. no. Good comedy, though, I guess. Yeah. Well, moving on. This is going to be a Grecian character because there's a sheep behind them, I think. Also, they give me um, cyberpunk vibes and now knowing that the Greek gods are all space mechas, uh, there appears to be a connection there. Is the well no maybe not actually because we already guessed Jason. Hmm. Is this Paris? This is Paris. And the is... shape on his head is Apollo. So still, still male. Still male. Interesting. Just child. Okay. Hard to tell. Kind of wearing a skirt. Cute, though.
Okay, this is going to be a Miyamoto Musashi. Okay, yes, you are correct. Okay. Interesting. Very skimpy outfit for his detail as it is, I guess. Mm -hmm. I have mixed feelings about Musashi, personally, and how they handle her and stuff. I like the colors that they chose, but not the design of her outfit, I think. Hmm. Personally. Well, moving on. Alright. This is going to be Quetzalcoatl. Uh, you are correct. It's the only one who's had uh, South American theme so far. So, yeah. That last picture is interesting. <laughs> mm -hmm. I honestly had never seen it before today, so... Fair enough. Or before I assembled this, rather. It emphasizes his hair. Her. Her. Oh, you're right. I didn't notice. <laughs> Interesting. Yep. Well, do you want to know the stupid explanation that fate that has for, fate has for the Aztec gods? Yes. The Aztec gods are bacteria. Are like. Bacteria-sized parasites that possess people from outer space. That crash landed in Me in the South American area with uh, an asteroid. Well, I think it's not creative. Yeah. And I don't know that there's anything else I can say about that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Reminds me of... Uh... Animorphs. Uh, okay. She's got breasts. Um, yep. The nautical theme makes me think that this may finally, after three guesses, be Francis Drake. You are correct. Okay. Uh, you know, I guess they needed a pirate like that. A must have for a game with fan service. We actually have two more female pirates in the form of uh, Mar uh, Anne Bonnie and Mary Reed. Okay. So. Mary Reed's a cool historical figure. Mm -hmm. Actually, they come as a package, the two of them, so that's actually kind of neat. Huh. I'll show them to you later. And honestly, yeah. my biggest complaint is that they never really try. They they like. So, sort of hand wave it away but like oh maybe it was maybe uh queen elizabeth and uh francis drake were the same person but they never really go anywhere with it and they kind of forget about it entirely and so it's like you just have this francis drake was a woman for no real reason <laughs> like they like my, my biggest complaint with it is that there's a perfectly viable chinese female pirate that was absolutely legendary i forget her name off the top of my head but my biggest complaint is that they could have just gone with her instead. Gosh. Yeah, that... Also, canonically, Francis Drake kills uh, Poseidon. Francis Drake finds Atlantis and kills Poseidon. That's another one of those weird, weird little snippets of lore that just makes absolutely no sense out of context, but, like, I'm curious how it even happened. Uh, it, it just did. Francis Drake and crew one day stumbled across Atlantis, they started looting it, Poseidon got mad, and, and they somehow killed Poseidon. How did they win? Francis Drake is just super... Francis Drake in the game has, like, it, in lore, has, like, this concept called Pioneer of the Stars. Which lets them just stay, say no to things like fate and destiny. Uh... And so Francis Drake just goes no to being bound by such things as humans can't kill gods. So Francis Drake and kill crew killed Poseidon and looted Atlantis for all it was worth. Oh my gosh. <laughs> That's wild. Yeah. 
All right. Well, the fact that this man is in a library makes me think that he may be Shakespeare. You are correct. This is Shakespeare, and I love him. He seems friendly. He okay, is... Okay, picture is a little less friendly. Shakespeare is the character who likes to try and re is, likes to try and create tragedies in real life. He, That's he's all screwed up. <laughs> he he well he likes he prefers tragedies but he likes trying to create uh stories. He has minor reality manipulating powers and uh reality warping powers. And I could see it being interesting conceptually for a character anyways. Mm -hmm. And so if you're like if you're like his uh, master in the, in the show, you better hope that you're interesting enough for him to consider you the proper main character otherwise he's going to screw you over hard. <laughs> That's an interesting plot device. Yeah, I kind of like that. <laughs> well, I do believe we reached the end. Really? Okay. Did I? Yeah. So, yeah, the imposters then were Anastasia, Orion, Mordred, Romulus, and Joan of Arc, and Dr. Jekyll, Mr. Hyde. Yep, actually, I, 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 I thought I, I, I thought I'd put Orion in here, but I guess I forgot. Whoops. Okay. <laughs> Maybe you didn't, I just didn't. I've been marking which ones I, you know. Well, well, no, no, I thought I put Orion in the uh thing. Okay. In, in the in the presentation, but apparently I didn't. Okay, fair enough. So yeah. Ugh. All right. Well, you have fun with that. Yeah, it was good. Any particular characters that really stood out to you one way or the other? Uh, Jack the Ripper. Naturally. For obvious reasons. Um, Musashi, just for being extremely colorful. Mm -hmm. And Bedivere was adorable. Yes, Bedivere is best boy. And I think many people will agree with that. Good. All right. Well, thank you for coming. And guys, if you like this, uh, please make sure to like and subscribe so that way, you know, we can have more of these and I'll just see you later. If you also have any ideas on how to do things a bit differently or mix things up as well, let me know. Bye bye.